All right, everyone. Last looks. Quiet on set. Real sound. Sound speed. Real camera. Camera speed. Scene one, take one. Mark it. And action. Hi, I'm Ed, the host of Savannah on Film, and we explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry in related fields. You can find us here on WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. Everybody. Welcome to Savannah on Film. We are here on Savannah on Film. I'm your host, Ed Susevich. Joining me today is a co-host. He's going to be popping in from the fundraising team here at WRUU, Trent. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Trent. Thanks for joining us. Thank we're, you. I appreciate it. We're going to hear from him in just a bit. Let me tell you about our purpose here on Savannah on Film like we always do. We explore the economic and cultural impact and values of the film industry in Savannah through conversations with people who work in the industry and related fields. We are here on WRUU 107.5 FM, WRUU LP, Savannah Sailings, Community Radio with Global Soul. Welcome to the show, John Grace. This is my hero, my mentor. The reason I got started here in the film industry. And uh, let me tell you a bit about John. Uh, John Grace is a veteran director of photography and camera operator with over 30 years of experience on scores of theatrical features and national television shows and hundreds of industrials and commercials. During the past few years, he's worked on projects for pretty much every network. From the Learning Channel, Discovery, History Channel, CBS, NBC, ABC, you name it. And you have garnered over 30 state and national awards for your production company that you had. Uh, you created a digital boot camp, and you have been in a lot of festivals. And for the past 15 years or so, you've offered technical production classes and continuing educational classes at the University of New Mexico during the summer film camp for teens. And you're a former vice president of IATSE Local 480, the union representing film technicians in the state of New Mexico. And you continue to work as a director of photography, DP, gaffer and studio teacher in professional productions. You're an education member of the Society of Camera Operators, SOC. And you join the faculty of the Georgia Film Academy at Savannah Tech uh, here in Savannah in may of 2016 and you currently teach there and uh welcome to the show john <laughs> that was what we call a very rough opening so i gave up on the headphones here but that's know. the exciting part of live radio that's the exciting part of live radio it definitely is i have ten thousand pages of stuff you've done here i want to jump right into the questions i just want to there you go just cut to the chase and what got you started in the film industry john you know I was in middle school when I picked up a camera for the first time, and I was hooked. I loved the ability to communicate visually, and uh, I shot all of our home videos for the family from that point forward, and then started doing creative work. And uh, while I was still in high school, uh, entered a bunch of film festivals, and uh, ultimately was a runner-up 
in uh, the Kodak Student Film Awards for a couple of years mm-hmm. and started lecturing at other high schools while I was still in high school and then got hired on my first film before I graduated from high school. Wow. You just hit the ground running there. I did. I did. I had some breaks. Uh, it's all about the opportunities that you get and taking advantage of them. That's true. That's true. You, you, you can't pass up a good opportunity when it comes along your way. How did you get started at it in like the cinematography? And what, what drew you to like cinematography? I just like visual communication. I like composing shots and, and seeing the work up on the screen. I think it's the, the part of uh, the collaborative process of filmmaking that is the most uh, easily observed is, is the visual aspect. And I uh, love seeing my work on the screen. And for those who don't know, and most do, but a cinematographer or director of photography is sometimes shortened to DP or DOP is the chief over the camera crews working on a film and television production. So what cinematographers inspire you? Oh, gosh. Put me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, there are a bunch of them. I wish I could think of a, a ton of names, uh, but I can't right now. But I think, you know, every cinematographer has his own style. And once you get used to looking at their particular uh, trademark style, you can almost pick them out uh, when you watch a feature film. Okay. I know that the visual style is, to capture that, I'm a visual person myself, and to capture the beauty of a scene from just like the eye of of the cinematographer, the DP, to capture that is, is something amazing. Of course, I'm a sound person, but I do appreciate the picture. But we talked about this in class. We did. We you did. You forgive bad picture, but you don't forgive bad, bad sound. Bad sound, yeah. I've been places where I've heard bad sound, and I just had to get out the room. I couldn't I couldn't be in the same it's, room. With, it's cringeworthy. It, it, is. it is cringeworthy, and I'd say, what, what 60% at least is sound. For me, it's a hundred percent. I know. <laughs> you know, it's. I, I hate to give up that much percentage personally, yeah. but yeah, it, it. You do forgive bad picture, and you don't forgive bad sound. You. It's right. the fastest way to recognize an amateur production is the quality of the sound that they record on. Interesting. That that's a very good point. So, so I could turn this again around now and start interviewing you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> so what you've been doing since class? I've been working on several different projects. And I can't really talk about a lot of them specifically because NDAs, but I have been working on some projects. See, we're looking at Facebook now since we've got some people. And this is our first, my first chance. We've got a filmmaker on there. Let's see, uh, Ken Butler. Hey, Ken. Hi, Ken. Hey, Ken. I'm learning. I got a brand new phone. No, it's cool. It's cool, John. Ken Butler's watching. Yeah, he's watching. He's watching. So somebody's watching. We're trying to do this on Facebook Live also. So <laughs> my first stream, it's... Oh, dear. (laughs) On a new phone. That brings me to another point, knowing your equipment. (laughs) That's right. Rehearsals are important. Rehearsals are important. Um, There's so much, I mean, from from the point of sound, it's it's so vital in a picture to capture high-quality sound when you're, if you just don't do it right, if you, you know, you've got to get the right people with the right equipment and with the right talent because you could have the best equipment but not the talent right you know um and 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 with that in mind mm -hmm. you've spent quite a bit on your equipment already haven't you yes uh, yes um it's an investment uh, it it is an investment um i own professional equipment and it's done me very well and uh you know but it's hard to be a sound mixer without gear it is it is you can be a sound uh assistant you can be a boomer you could be a utility but to be a mixer, you got to have the gear. Well, I remember we, we had, going back a little bit in class one day, we had, a, um, I think it was a producer come in there, and I can't remember his name right now offhand, but uh, he came there and he, were, he was asking diff, different students in GFA and Georgia Film Academy what we wanted to be. And so when he got around to me, I said, well, I want to be a sound mixer. I, didn't, I went past utility boomer and everything. I was like, sound mixer, sound, sound is my life. <laughs> and he's like, okay, yeah, but you know, you got to be willing See, that's the thing. People think they can just jump into a career. Can you talk a little bit about that, you know, the different stages from your experience? 
Let me put this. Okay, I'm sorry. I need a cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> camera person. Camera person. That's right, camera person. Um, you know, getting started in any industry is difficult, but in film it's even more difficult because you usually have to be a union member okay. in order to uh, to work on set. And in order to get union days, you know, you have to be a <laughs> union member. It's a catch-22. So, right. So... Uh, well, the, the the beauty of the uh, Savannah Film Academy or the uh, Georgia Film Academy at Savannah, Savannah Tech, Tech yeah. is the fact that we get you your first gigs. Um, you get paid to work on set as a mm -hmm. as a trainee. Um, not a lot, but you get paid something, which is better than a yes poke in the eye with a sharp stick. It, yeah, definitely. I mean, I got to intern on Galveston was our class and mm -hmm. and. Um, phenomenal experience mind-boggling every day it was like ugh, mind blown mind blown day two day three day. i know i've got students right now on every production that's in town um the one that we can't say uh, yeah the name the <laughs> which name is, that show which up. is called uh you know yes. euphemistically goodbye Str or hello stranger hello stranger okay. is that what it is goodbye stranger goodbye stranger uh, there's a stranger I involved in the trap uh -oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here exclusively. And everybody knows. Hey, I don't know why knows. we're pretending it's not in town. I know. Um, I've got students on, is it Summer Gold, I think, that's going now? I think it's um, one of them. And one called uh, The Act, uh, which is also called The Cat Project. The so we've cat. got the dog project and the cat project. The dog, cat, and... But uh, even though it's a small, advanced class, everyone's working, and I've got students on all three productions. That's excellent. What is some of the feedback that the students are giving you? I'm They're just loving it. There's there's one who was working in the art department mm -hmm. on uh, Goodbye Stranger, and uh, they liked her so much that she they put her on in the staff. So she's now officially a staff member. And uh, once she got her twenty days, you know the right. uh, Georgia Film Academy no longer, no longer pays for the internship. But she got hired on as as a staff member, so and that's that's the ultimate. Uh, that's basically to her because set. you have the, the first semester, right, and then Correct. and then the second semester you go into advanced, mm -hmm. and by the time you get into the advanced class, the idea is to get you on set, if not sooner, if not right. sooner. It's a two semester program. Right, uh, it's very affordable. Uh, the first semester is six credit hours, and our our credit hours at Savannah Tech are eighty nine dollars per credit hour plus some fees. Um, so it's it's not going to break the bank. Mm -hmm. um, the first semester is is you know I generalize and say it's pretty much twenty five percent hands on and seventy five percent lecture because we got to get through all the technical aspects. Second semester is more like seventy five percent hands on and twenty five percent lecture, because you already know the basics. Um, it's just honing and refining those skills, right. and uh, that's that's the goal is to get you on set working, uh, working with professionals, and um, to build your skill set while you are. The pressure's not on as much as it would be in the real world where you are getting paid the big bucks to do to to right. do those those jobs and i want to talk a little bit about in a bit i want to talk a little bit about independent film because mm -hmm. you know a lot of there's tons Great of students well let's talk about it now yeah let's why not why not that's a good place to hone your skills that's that's not to say mess up but that's if you're going to make a mistake it's it's <laughs> the place it's the yeah. learning it's right. part of the learning you know, it's, curve. It's, yeah, it's it's where you want to make your mistakes because they aren't critical and you won't get fired over them. You'll get reprimanded probably, but um, you know it's it's where you can uh, make those mistakes and be forgiven. And so we work a lot with the SCAD projects that are in town. Mm -hmm. uh, SCAD's been very helpful, giving our students an opportunity to work on set, and they do a lot more projects than we do. And then we do our own individual projects. We do at least one um, competitive film every semester, usually for one of the 48s. Um, Those the, are so much fun. Yeah, I love 48-hour oh film projects. I got a story for you. Okay. You've okay. heard it. Yeah, but maybe my audience has. I'm sure they haven't. But um, yeah, I had, a, I had a little part in the founding of the 48. Uh, wow. We started a filmmaking competition. And I, let, me, let me backtrack a bit. Sure. I had a 
uh, a school, a film school, for a brief time with a gentleman named Frank Zuniga, who was a Disney director and mm-hmm. dis- you know worked for Disney for years and years. And um, we were struggling. It was a little before uh, the incentives kicked in in New Mexico. Uh, so we were lucky to make one film a year there. So there really wasn't much call for film education at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, once the incentives kicked in, it's like it has happened in Georgia. You know, everybody is scrambling to get people trained so that they can work on set. But this was before the big, uh, you know, ramp up right. in the industry in New Mexico. And <clears throat> I had a friend at the Albuquerque Journal who came by one day and he says, John, uh, can I take you to lunch? I'd like to pick your brain. And I never pass up a free lunch. There you go. That's one of my mottos. Um, <laughs> it's like so, showing up on set and you never pass up that good right. breakfast. You or always that. show up at six hours in exactly. when you can eat. Yeah. Uh, um, but I, so, I said, sure, you know, and so uh, what's up, Tony? And he said, well, we're going to start a film festival in, in Albuquerque. I said, that's a great idea. Albuquerque needs a film festival. Taos had one. Santa Fe had a big one. Even mm-hmm. uh, Las Cruces had a film festival. I said, you know, Albuquerque needs a good, viable film festival. He said, but we want to make it a filmmaking festival. We want to make a feature film in a Excellent. week. And I said, Tony, you're crazy. You're killing me, dude. You can't, you can't do it. It can't, you can't be done. You can't make a feature film in a week. And, 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 and can't doesn't mean anything. <laughs> no, no. I, but we had just finished working on a short film for a friend of ours. Um, I had a production company at this time as well. And we had just done a short film for, for this buddy. Uh, we shot for three days. We edited for three days. Within a week, it was done. I said, you could do a short. You could do a bunch of shorts. Mm-hmm. And he goes, aha. Uh-huh. And that was Even on, especially with the technology today, that's even more advanced than then, oh. you, can, you can do it on yeah. almost nothing. This was nothing. the beginning <laughs> of digital filmmaking, which was okay. the key to all of this. You had to have something that was instant gratification that you could post um, within three days, you know, if you were doing linear editing, okay. no, ch- no chance. No chance. But <laughs> non-linear editing, you had the opportunity to really do something within a week. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it was the beginning of what was called, uh, to begin with, Flix on 66, which ultimately became the Duke City Shootout. And it ran for 10 years, and it was the inspiration, in part, for the 48-hour film project. A friend of ours founded the 48-hour film project and based it loosely upon our filmmaking festival and fixed all the mistakes that we made. Wow. Um, you know, rather than we provided, uh, we did a casting call in advance. We uh, flew the writer directors in to direct their projects. We provided them with a Hollywood mentor. We put them up, we fed them. We provided them with crew equipment, post-production facilities. I mean, it was an event. And right. Um, it was impractical. It was, it was, we tried to reproduce it in other cities. There was just no way to do that. So, um, what, uh, 48 did was, mm-hmm. well, why are we providing all that? Have them bring their own equipment, have them bring their own crew, their own actors. Then we can do it in a weekend. And that's, that's the founding for the, the, the oh, basic wow. idea behind the 48. Yeah. So, um, the 48, you get, uh, elements which keeps everybody honest. Uh, you get a line of dialogue, uh, a character name, an occupation, and a prop that you have to work into your script. So you can't really write your script in advance. Although, okay. I do know that some of the best ones have at least had their concept in it. I'm sorry you're breaking up. We're not hearing you. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all creative from there. <laughs> That's right. Well, some people, some filmmakers I know, they kind of have, you know, that... that foundations of a script you know just mm-hmm. the, the basics and then you plug in the elements and they can go like exactly. that exactly you it's, know and a good if you're a good screenwriter you can you can do that and we've been able to pull that off a couple of times yeah yeah and yeah the, more the films often that, than not we have to pretty much start from scratch the a cu- couple of uh last two i guess uh 48s that i've worked on david harlan russo who's been on the show mm-hmm. he wrote on the cello was the last one we did for 2018. Before that was um, Indeed. And for Indeed, he literally wrote it on his way driving. I mean, he wasn't driving. He had someone else driving, I should say. Man, that's really talented. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, take a notes, um, phone app or whatever it is. But, um, yeah, so he, um, 
if you're just that talented, you can do it. You can take those elements and you can put them together in a compelling way that, that has a wonderful story. Mm-hmm. But that's just half the battle. That's, that's the beginning. <laughs> yeah, because Sunday is always the worst in the 48. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows the that. Scramble. That is crunch time, big time. And, yep. and, and even if you've got a really skilled editor, mm-hmm. you're still going to come down to the wire half the time. We, we had a situation where someone in our class was trying to edit one of our <laughs> films and computer filled up and it slowed down and I, yeah. I know how that is. And, uh, it's agony. Yeah, I know. It was agony. We're like, we, we didn't get in, but it's it's okay. It was still a learning experience. Everything that's considered a mistake, we learn from. Right. You know, when we fall, it's so how we can learn to get back up and exactly. do better the next time. And... Uh, uh, wonderful things about the 48 we're gonna transition real quick here um, i'm gonna get back to you john i'm gonna bring my friend trent in here and he's gonna tell us a little about bit about what's going on uh, thank you so much for letting me come on in your show and, and talk directly to your listeners of uh, savannah on film and you know i'm here because we are in the midst of our second annual on air pledge drive and this is a an exciting time for us here at the station because it really does open up so many possibilities for where we can go from here in, in Savannah Community Radio. And, you know, speaking directly to your listeners, the simplest reason to support WRUU with a financial gift is because you listen to shows like Savannah on Film. You're able to listen to your your neighbors and your friends on the airwaves and online, which is just a really special thing. And a good point about that, you know, I mean... It's the listeners that, that make it all possible. Oh, most definitely. Most and, you definitely. know, it, 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 it doesn't always, you know, come out really slick or smooth. But you know what? <laughs> it definitely has heart. And you can't argue with that about uh, WRUU. Um, and, you know, we have some uh, special uh, prizes and incentives to give away to show our appreciation to our, uh, our people who are donating either um, as a, a a donator who's donated before or as someone who's given a gift for the first time. Anyone who makes a one-time donation to WRUU in the amount of $107.50, $107.50, or a recurring donation in the amount of $10 a month is someone who we call a serious fan. And serious fans will get a free WRUU T-shirt, and you may have seen some of them around town. Some WRUU oh, swag. You yeah. got it. <laughs> and we'll contact you by email to find out your size and where to send it once you make your your gift. Um, several local businesses have also made generous donations to provide a little extra incentive to help with our fundraising. And so anyone who becomes a serious fan is eligible to receive one of the following gifts, in or in addition to the T-shirt. Um, a ten dollar class pass or a ten class pass to Custom Fit Center, um, a three month gym membership at twenty four seven Fitness, um, a two hundred dollar gift certificate to Smart Smoke Cartel, which is actually a Savannah based online retailer that's actually hitting it really big all across the United States. Um, we got a fifty dollar gift certificate to the Savannah Art Association Gallery, which is you know right close to us here at our studio over there mm-hmm. in Chippewa Square. Um, it features the work of you know. Uh, over 40 artists um, from here in Savannah. And uh, finally, a one-year sub- subscription to ForMyCard.com, which is kind of cool. It's a it's an online, unlimited, cross-platform business card service. And so in order to receive one of these gifts as a thanks for your support, just email membership at WRUU.org to confirm that the gift is still available before you make your donation. And also, if you've already made a donation during this year's campaign, or if you have um, already given to RUU on a monthly basis, you're eligible for these gifts as well. Um, and this is for people who are at the serious fan level, of course. So please email membership at WRUU.org to confirm availability. And to make your donation, just go to WRUU.org and look for the donate button, and it will walk you right through the process right there. Thank you so much, Ed. Yeah, thank you, Trent. That's some really good information, and we really do appreciate the wonderful support of everyone in the community for this all-volunteer radio station. Most definitely. And a lot of diverse programming we've got going on here. So thank you very much for that, Trent. Back to Facebook. Let's see. We've got some questions here. I can't see. That's that's how you know the vision's going. Um, (laughs) I see Patrick Roper's watching. Hey, Patrick, a wonderful actor, one of the best in Savannah. He's been on our show before. And uh, (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, John. You're doing. I'm making you work during this show. I feel bad. That's <laughs> what I do. It's what you do, and it's what you love. And mm-hmm. and um, 
we were talking about Georgia Film Academy. Of course, like I wouldn't be where I'm at without it. There's so many people in this city just alone that wouldn't be in the film industry, wouldn't be part of this expanding industry without the tutelage from Georgia Film Academy. Also, of course, we have SCAD in Savannah. That, Absolutely. And there's always a student thesis film going on. And sometimes I just love going through the Facebook groups and seeing what the latest taglines are. There's some really, some are really intriguing. Some next they? level stuff going on there, too. Yeah. So, But let's see. Being a, a teacher, and I want to kind of shift gears a little bit. You were, are, I guess, an onset teacher slash studio teacher. Studio teacher. Um, you want to kind of tell our audience what that is for those who don't know the uninitiated well they also call it a, a welfare worker uh, on right. set and that means that that you're there to protect the interests of of uh student actors mm -hmm. so you know there's a there's a set number of hours that student actors can work they have to get their uh you know schooling right. in while they're working and so that's what a studio teacher does is you know work them uh through their their lesson plan whatever that might be and make sure that they are not uh you know falling behind in school in order to be uh able right. to be in front of the camera you gotta you gotta make the grades if you're gonna play yeah, that's right. <laughs> so do you have any horror stories you can talk about <laughs> no they're all good stories actually really? i have had a couple of monster kids Monster. Um, there have been a couple. Kids are wonderful, but but there but there are the sometimes, know, sometimes the ones who can be a challenge. Yeah, a challenge. Um, but for the most part, you know, the experiences are great. I, I love that job. Um, you know, I've worked as a director of photography and gaffer and and best boy electric on on big productions, but those are all very physical, very demanding uh, jobs, and I find that studio teaching stretches my brain a little more than mm -hmm. my than my body so uh at this age uh it's a whole lot easier and they don't work you hard uh you you're there while the students are there and you and know it's, it's good pay if you can get it it's, it's great pay yeah. you get paid really really well yeah for a short number of hours and you get to hang out with kids which is always fun yeah even even the not so well behaved ones, <laughs> even the ones that can be a child. Divas got to start somewhere, That's right? right. They learn somewhere. <laughs> Male, female divas, they're they're all out there. So, what inspires you about being part of the film industry? I mean, you know, there's no other artistic endeavor that incorporates all the arts. That's what I love about film. Film incorporates all the arts, and so no matter what your skill set is there is a job for you in the film industry. So, um, you know, I mean, people that have never considered this as a, as a job before um, might want to reconsider and, and look at the options that are available to them in the film industry because there really are jobs for everyone. And, and, it, uh, and not to catch you off there, but I, I always kind of just imagine uh, your face popping up in the middle of the air over my shoulder. I've, you've, been, you've been on many productions with me when you've physically not been there because your tutelage and, and things like that you're saying are very true. And, and, you know, there are so, you know, you could be a greener. There's, there's like, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, anything, if you've got a background in, you know, in, you know, yard maintenance, you could be a greensman. You if can, you've got construction background, you can work in the. It doesn't matter your age, and we department. talk about it on the show here. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter, matter where you came from, what no, you've been. Absolutely not. One of our yeah. most successful graduates uh, is several years older than I am, and he hasn't stopped in his twenties or, or that, her of 20s. course. Oh. You know, he's, he's in their twenties, pushing seventy. Oh. I hate to say, but oh yeah, um, and. You know, it's really non-discriminatory. It's a, it's a wonderful industry in the fact that if you've got a skill set, they appreciate it. Right. And I always say, three keys to success. Oh, yeah, here it goes. I want to <laughs> hear it. Show up on time. Right. Work hard. Don't complain. And maybe there's a fourth or a 1A in there. Well, there's there. lots more. There's lots more. But, I mean, those are brilliant. But if you're on time, you're what? Well, if you're in if the film you're industry on time, you're late. Exactly. Uh, you need to be 15 minutes to a half an hour early. And there's two good reasons. Mm -hmm. One is because stuff comes up and you get put right into, uh, you know, put. No, nope, don't worry about it. <laughs> right. Put right onto, onto the set, right into work. Uh, but there's also non-deductible breakfast, which means you get yummy, family to show up. NDB. And those 
the skill set and just those those things have helped out on so many productions I've been on, of course. And and I've seen some people that maybe didn't adhere to some of those standards, you know, showed up when they felt like it. And you'll get Are they fired. No, this one person, I don't think so, um, <laughs> that I'm thinking of. But um, I can remember production, and we're not going to call names, but uh, somebody showed up several hours late into mm. when we were filming yep. at one time. And I think you you were kind enough to put that person on Crafty, <laughs> which was a, a big demotion, but <laughs> but it taught that person a lesson. Well, they'd already and, been you know, replaced. Right. You don't show up, somebody right. else has to do your job. And so somebody stepped up, and um, mm-hmm. and that and that's what will happen. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll get passed over, you get replaced, because you want to work with the people who are there, who are reliable. Okay. Are you seeing something funny there on oh, Facebook? It, you're trending. Oh, I'm trending? Okay, well, that's... Whatever that's, that means. <laughs> Okay, we're trending. So then on film, this is our first live behind the scenes. I don't know. Uh, you can't see me. I got to work work on, out on the uh, placement of that. Uh, that's right. But uh, <laughs> back there would be really. Cool. I know. I need more cameras. No, no. That's a, my wife would tell you that's, that's the last thing cameras. I need is a mirror or a camera. Okay. So I'd be like, yeah, how's everything? Else? How's my hair? Yeah, how's my hair? Um, it's still there, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, like I said before, you've been on so many productions, what you've taught me alone, and you're always kind of there. You've always been, if I, if I needed to give you a call, if I needed to say, hey, reach out to you, email or text, say, hey, John, what about this? What about that? You know, you've always been there and for and all of your students. Be. That's part of the value added. Yeah. You know, once you're a student at Savannah Tech, you're always a student. Right. You know, anytime you need something, we, we have your back. Um, I still have students coming in and, and borrowing equipment when they need it, as long as they put one of my students to work. That's the key. Yeah. So, uh, but it works out. Uh, we we get students on everything. And, and a little known fact here: you were originally slated to be, in my mind, my first guest, and we just couldn't <laughs> get our schedules going. And um, so, uh, I see a lot of comments there. Hey, everybody. I don't see much. Okay. <laughs> okay. Didn't, but it's didn't really need it. Okay. okay. It's a live stream. And I don't want to take away from the wonderful show we got going on here. But um, thank you, everybody, for listening on Facebook. They're getting bored with me. They're getting bored with you. Yeah, I think so. All right. It just asked me. Well, now I'm staring at the camera. Okay, don't look at the camera. <laughs> see, I couldn't be an actor. But there's, there's the great skill set and things you learn. They always go with you. And it is, like you said... I remember in school, you said that you'll you'll develop friends that'll be lifelong friends. Right. You know, and they become your family. You, and, you do. You um, know, especially when you get on productions. You know, big scale productions, they might be your six month family, your two month family, but you know, you still keep up with each other down the road. You do. You know, and yeah. and anytime you get back together on another production, it's mm-hmm. just like you you never left off. You know, you just uh, you're right back where you started, and it's it's comforting. It, it it is and 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 if you've been away from it too long, you get that itch. It's like you, you know I, I get to, you know, I need to do sound on something. I need to record something. You know, I need to film something, and and that's just you know really following your passion. Let's see. I wanted to ask you that. What do you like most um, being involved with GFA? Wow. Um, well, being here in Savannah. Um, they're in Atlanta. That's what I like most. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a lot of uh, autonomy. I'm I'm pretty you know independent here. So um, the downside is that my students aren't able to take advantage of the specialty classes that are offered in Atlanta. Okay. Um, they offer now, uh, and this is going to make you sad probably, but they <laughs> offer uh, a post production class. Mm. They've got special effects makeup class that just started this semester. They've been doing uh, grip and rigging, and that's okay. been going almost a year, well, I guess over a year now, uh, electric and lighting, and uh, set construction and finishing. And with all those specialty classes, um, they are able to offer lots of options for the students to get their full 12 uh, hours of internship or specialty. Here... It's an advanced class, okay. so we do we do it a little different. It's it's just basic the basic cra- uh, class on steroids is what I always describe it as. <laughs> you you take the skill set that you learned in the first semester and expand it, and all of our students are able to do the internship. Where a lot of the students that take the program in Atlanta, three quarters, are not able to get an internship. Wow, 
Do you think that's an advantage or a disadvantage? I'd say it's an advantage and a disadvantage. It's an advantage in the fact that we have, we're able to get all the students on set. It's a disadvantage in the fact that we don't have the special, uh, the specialty classes to offer here. Okay. We've been trying to get them off the ground. Problem is that we don't have enough people taking any one specialty for the class to make. Right. I've tried the uh, lighting and electric class twice now, and both times I've had four okay. students saying it just isn't enough to keep that class going. Wow. That, that's a shame because, because grip and electric, vital. They're vital. Vital to a film. But, but if I've got you know, 30 students, right. um, three or four of them might be interested in grip and electric. Right. So. Everybody wants to be. How many producers in the room? How many That's, directors? You know, we're not quite them? that bad, but it, you know, no, I know. With, I know. with, uh, with SCAD, it's it's more. You know, they teach above the line. We teach below the line. So at least we've got more people who really want to be film technicians. I was, um, all, and and nothing against SCAD at all. Not at fine, all. fine school, fine programs there that they offer. Fine faculty, students that come out of there, great filmmakers. But I had someone uh, say to me on set, they said, you know, I really prefer a GFA student because, and I'm not trying to plug things, but this has literally happened. They they said, because you guys seem rearing and ready to go and you've got your skill set ready. Not to say that other other filmmakers coming up don't, but this particular that's music person. music to my ears. Yeah, that's music to your ears. And I, I told you <laughs> I've been... Because we've, we've got very limited... Um, assets to work from you know we've got uh one instructor in the film program that's it yeah you know they've got 24 um we have you know good equipment but we don't have the best equipment right because you know there's a price to the best equipment well that actually is a good lean into one of the questions that I, I, I always ask here, and this is a, a more generalized question. Mm -hmm. You can be specific if you need to be, but the Savannah film community as a whole, what do you think are some of the things that we need to grow into professionals to, to take Savannah, get Savannah up to that Atlanta level, that Hollywood you know, level? Yeah. And I love that question. Yeah. Uh, because it gives me an opportunity to go on about something that's very important to me, which is um, for a film community to be thriving on the long term, you've got to realize that incentives come and go. And uh, what really is the, the deciding factor in the success long term of a film community is whether or not you are creating product from within. And so, you know, part of the beauty of of projects that are generated within Savannah is that we are training our people to be writers and directors and producers. Right. And if, if we have somebody, a good example is Robert Rodriguez in, in Austin, Texas. He has created a film community in Austin, even though the incentives went away in Texas years ago. It's not considered one of the big vital competitors in the film industry for runaway production, which is what this is called, you know, coming to another state to make movies right um but it's a thriving film community because of robert rodriguez robert rodriguez if you're not familiar with him did uh mm -hmm. spy kids and uh el mariachi and desperado and desperado the, what a great movie that yeah was. it really was yeah, it's still um, great. yeah and you know all of those movies like he's the director of photography he composes the music he does the editing i mean he is a one-man band almost and these are high quality movies that that you know get international release and so we need that we need that pool of talent that can create a uh, high quality entertainment from the ground up uh, definitely infrastructure infrastructure Th that's one of the things we're missing and that's why we aren't quite as competitive uh, okay we're not near as competitive as Atlanta right. is because Atlanta they have Pinewood has, yeah Pinewood and other studios True. so um, and that's that's the one thing that we really need here more than anything else um, is the studio st system you know you need to have studios you need to have sound stages uh, that was what take, took New Mexico to the next level Albuquerque and Santa Fe both have viable sound stages. There are nine in Albuquerque at one location, two in another, and uh, on, in a single. 
And then in Santa Fe, there's Santa Fe Studios, um, which has two sound stages, and Garson Studios, which has two others. Mm -hmm. And they're always working and they're always full. And I I really believe that a a savvy investor putting the money into building a sound stage, a viable sound stage here in Savannah, would get their money back tenfold. And it would help this community beyond anything that we've we seen had, before. Beth Nelson, I had her on the show before, and that's one of the things I definitely wanted to talk with her about. And and she couldn't give too many specifics, but it sounds like something's coming. You know, it and sounded that way for five or six was, years. Yeah, you're right. You know? You're right. And we need that because we need a home base. I mean, they need to be able to, mm-hmm. we need, we need these different prop houses and right. stuff like that in that infrastructure. We need the physical building spaces. Mm-hmm. So if you want to see more films, if you want to see, I, I tell people, if you want to see Black Panther 2 made in Savannah, you want to see Ant-Man and the Wasp 3, or God, you want to see stages. Star Wars Well, and the big Savannah, difference that a soundstage makes is that you can do episodic television. And, very true. And we do get occasional episodic television shows through here, but really the key to getting a, 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 a television series that, that lasts, like Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul or any of those mm-hmm. that I've worked on, um, is the fact that they've got a place that they can build interior st- uh, sets. We call them standing sets. And and they know that they've got those to go to anytime you've got a bad day, a uh, day that's too hot, a day that's raining. Um, right. and, and there's always a place to go and shoot. Because especially this summer, it rained like every day, I think. It did. And it's we're officially in the fall, which is like probably this week. And then, yeah, it was, then it's I think back day before to yesterday. Yeah, the day before yesterday, <laughs> and then it's back to summer. It's back to the swampy, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, the the mosquitoes didn't even have a chance to come out. The gnats are still out. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but it's wonderful. So, here's a question: Where do you see your career in five years? I love what I'm doing. Honestly, I, I wouldn't do anything that. else right now. I mean. I'm doing what I love, and and uh, I'm, you know, very appreciated at the school. And um, well, you're very appreciated by your students. Well, I love that past, present, and I, I'll say future. I'll well, I hope there's future students. <laughs> there will be. There will be. Trust me, there will be. Um, I think it's you know we've got a we've got a nice family that that's you know growing by the semester, mm-hmm. and uh, you know we encourage you to be part of that family. There you go. <laughs> um, so. With that awareness, connecting people, mixers, you always right. talk about. Always got you got to do the outreach. You got to go everywhere and have your have your business cards on you, right? Always have cards, even if even if they're the simplest of cards mm-hmm. with your name, yep. an email address, you know, your Vimeo, right. you know, have it or wherever your real storage, your website, whatever, mm-hmm. a phone number, anything. How you how do they know how to get a hold of you otherwise? How will they know that? Because mm-hmm. at a mixer, you get so many. You talk to so many people, and sometimes you don't know that you're talking to a producer. I, I literally was at uh, the DeSoto before at, at a luncheon, and a gentleman said to me, uh, he can't, he stopped me at the doorway, and he said, are you such and such? And I said, I stopped in my tracks, and I was like, well, if no, but if I need to be, I can be. And I was like, let's talk. <laughs> and so we talked a little bit, but uh, he was actually looking for somebody else who was uh, – um, I think a director, but I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> but you never know when the next opportunity is. You don't know when you're talking to the next up and coming producer, director, screenwriter. And it's, and, and I've made so many friends in the industry and so many um, connections. And like you said, that they're, they're, they're lifelong connections. And um, so. So with that in mind, mm-hmm. um, don't know if y'all know about Ed's history, Uh-oh. but. Um, he had a very successful career as a store manager. Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't store manager. Assistant? Well, HR. 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 HR, and I did yeah. other things. Yeah. For, and gave that up to work in the industry. 28 and a half years. Any regrets? No regrets. Uh, I haven't looked back. Wonderful. Miss the people. Don't, don't miss the, you know, it was time for a change in my mm-hmm. life. And so it, it was time to follow a passion. And I'm it's not regretting. It's a leap of faith. It was it, on my part. It's been a massive leap of faith, and mm-hmm. and it's paid off somewhat. Have there been pitfalls? Uh, yes, there have been missteps, and that comes like with any career. We've talked to several actors that have been on here. You know, you're not always working. No, you know, there's going to be dry spells. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be a screenwriter. You're gonna be writing, but you're gonna find out 
you don't like half of what you're writing, maybe 10% of it, then there comes a point where that eureka moment happens for you and you discover that you've written something that's wonderful or you've got this concept in your mind and you've, you know, or, or a role just comes your way. I've had several roles because of people I've met through GFA, through SCAD, Mm -hmm. through um, being on film sets that, that have paid off quite literally paid Mm -hmm. off. And um, even if it's not, it's not always about the money in life. A lot of people focus on money, but it's not about the money. It's really about following your passion and being happy yeah. and content with what you're doing. How many people can say that about themselves, that, that they really love what they're doing? Yes. And, and GFA, not to do a commercial here, but <laughs> GFA is <laughs> definitely for me personally, <laughs> was definitely a, an avenue down that road. So mm-hmm. um, I say, I'm, I'm thankful for everything, even, even mistakes. Right. You know, even things that I say, next time I'll do it better. Mm-hmm. Next time I, I won't make that mistake. I won't get in that road. How, how we learn. It's live and learn and it's yeah. moving on. Um, I wish we had more time. I really well, do. I got a couple of things I want to plug. If you okay, go, go ahead and like plug. It yeah, up. yeah, yeah. And then we're going to hear from Trent in just a second. So, okay. yeah, by all means. Um, I do have uh, a, a buddy coming in to teach a documentary class. Um, we're going to send out some flyers over the next couple of weeks. Um, but Chris Schuler, ChristopherProductions.org, if you want to look him up on the internet, uh, has uh, written and directed I don't know how many documentaries, but he's got over 20 uh, Emmy Awards. And he's coming in to teach a two-day seminar uh, the first two days in December at Savannah Tech. Um, it's a standalone seminar, but he did it last year, and it was uh, – great i mean i've I've, chris is my teaching inspiration he's who i want to be when i grow up um (laughs) you got a long way to go right (laughs) don't we i do you'll be around forever but he's uh you know he's he's a great instructor and he Mm -hmm. makes documentary filmmaking up up his life's passion and it he shares that passion in this class in in two days Mm -hmm. you come up with the concept you you write a a treatment you basically get the wheels rolling to create a documentary he's coming in early to premiere a film uh called osimi uh it's making the festival circuit now i think Mm -hmm. it's going to be an academy award contender wow and uh, so he's premiering that on the friday and it's it's a free premiere he's also teaching a writing class on friday so it's it's two solid days of amazing classes. Is, is this at Savannah Tech? At Savannah Tech. Okay. You can, it, it won't be on the Savannah Tech website, but um, anyone who's on uh, Bo Bowen's mailing list will get a flyer. Uh, okay. Anybody, I think, at the film office mailing list is going to, is gonna like, if they're, they're willing, we'll send out a flyer for me as well. Yeah, Bo Bowen, shout out to him. He's doing a lot with the Savannah Film Alliance. He is. Here. Bo's awesome. And... Um, Anything and else? One more thing. One more thing. Okay. I do have a friend who's a, a special effects makeup technician. She's working down at uh, uh, Orlando right now uh, with the, um, what's it called? Universal's whatever Halloween show. And she is uh, coming in to teach a two-day class. Mm-hmm. Don't know the dates yet, uh, but I'll, you know, keep watching for that. Keep watching for that. Yeah. I don't make anything on these, by the way. These are okay. because I need to enhance what I'm able to do, and I'm only a one-man band. I can't teach everything. So I bring people in who can. Well, your wealth of knowledge has is, is changed many lives in, well, in positive you. ways. And, I appreciate and that. And thank you. I wish we had more time for you to come on here and talk. Maybe you'll be back soon? Uh, anytime. Sometime. Okay. And Thanks, Ed. I appreciate it. Thank you for being my first guest again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we can hit... Um, I'll say goodbye to Facebook. Let me just click finish there. And I'm going to, as we do that, I'm going to throw it over to, back to our friend Trent here that's going to tell us a few things. Are we, are you here? Oh, sorry. You can hear me. Okay. <laughs> Ed, thank you so much. You know, I, I this show is just one of the awesome reasons why we need um, WRUU. You know, it advocates for the film industry in Savannah. You know, and, and getting the word out about, you know, the amazing things that are happening with film in Savannah, but also, you know, the good things that it can do for our city and the people in our city. And, you know, that that's really the spirit of community radio and, and what you'll find here on mm-hmm. WRUU. You know, WRUU is unique in Savannah in so many ways. 
we provide programs that no one else will, actually. News programs like Background Briefing and Democracy Now!, and music programs of the widest and wildest possible styles, and really awesome local content like Savannah on Film that you're listening to right now. We really do embrace community spirit. And our mission is to provide voice and visibility to advance those values of community radio with a global soul. We have a lot of things that make us unique, and one of those is that we rely on your uniqueness to keep us going. Only you know how much community radio is worth to you, and we're counting on you to pledge whatever amount you can to grow community radio here in Savannah. So go online right now to pledge your support. It's simple. You just got to go to WRUU.org and look for the Donate button. And anyone who makes a one-time donation in the amount of $107.50, will, or a recurring donation of the amount of $10 or more per month, will be something that we call a serious fan. And to show our appreciation for serious fans, we'll send you a WRUU t-shirt. Uh, we'll contact you by email to find out your size and where to send it. Also, I do want to say that several local businesses have also made generous donations to provide a little extra incentive to help with our fundraising. So if you become a serious fan um, today or you have become a serious fan anytime within this uh, particular pledge drive, um, you are eligible for one of these prizes in addition to your T-shirt. Um, a 10-class pass to cu Custom Fitness Center, a three-month gym membership to 24-7 Fitness, a $200 gift card to Smoke Tar Cartel, a $50 gift certificate to the Savannah Art Association Gallery, or a one-year subscription to ForMyCard.com, which is a cross-platform online business card program. Um, in order to receive one of these gifts as a thanks for your support, please email membership at WRUU.org to confirm that they haven't already been taken. Um, if you've already made a donation during this year's campaign or if you uh, already give to WRUU on a monthly basis, you are eligible for one of these. So email membership at WRUU.org to claim one of those prizes. Again, this is for serious fan-level people only. Um, but we do want to thank uh, people who are giving at any amount, um, anyone who gives is definitely going to be getting a WRUU bumper sticker to slap on the back of your bumper. Um, so please email membership at WRUU.org to confirm availability of those prizes and log in to WRUU.org to make your donation. Ed, thanks again for giving time out of your show to get this important message out to your listeners. It's a very important message. Um, it's what keeps us going, the fans and all the listeners to WRUU, and we thank you. And I want to thank, my once again, my guest, John Grace, for, for joining me here today on Savannah on Film. Thank you, John. My pleasure. Uh, Savannah on Film wants to feature film professionals at different levels, so if you're listening and you're in the industry, I'd love to talk to you, too. Our email is savannahonfilm at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Uh, hope you enjoyed the Facebook Live there attempt. Uh, we'll get better at it, I promise. <laughs> um, you can check out the page there. We're also on Twitter and YouTube, where you'll eventually hear this interview. And so Savannah on Film is a voice for the Savannah film industry. And I'm your host, Ed Susevich, and you've been listening here on WRUU 107.5 FM LP, Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. You have been listening to another episode of Savannah on Film, where we give a voice to the Savannah film community. Please like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. This program was originally broadcast on 107.5 FM in Savannah, Georgia, and worldwide on www.wruu.org. Join us next time for more intriguing insights into the vibrant Savannah film community here at Savannah on Film.